Okay guys, so in this video we're going to assemble a really basic reverse osmosis system. Uh, I know there's RO systems out there that are going to be under the sink that are probably going to cost anywhere from a few hundred to even as high as a thousand dollars or so, just depending on what you see. What I wanted to do is I just wanted to kind of just take out the myths and you know just show you something simple uh, and easy to do that, that anybody can, can do at home. Um, and all you need is just a few simple components. Uh, just the bare bones is what we have right here. And what we'll do is we're just going to assemble this right now. And that way you can see what we, what is really required for you to do it. Um, what you have here is a reverse osmosis tank. You have the ball valve, um, drain line connection, feed valve adapter. Um, then you're going to have uh, membrane, membrane housing two filters. Uh, one's going to be for removing the chlorine uh, and the other one's going to be just to be improving the taste. Now I chose quick connects just because it's just one less fitting we have to deal with. So um, you can choose anything else if you want but uh, for this particular video we just wanted to make it as quick and as easy as possible. So we chose uh, quick connects just to uh, make it easier. We have an auto shutoff valve right here for you. Um, we do have a flow restrictor some Teflon tape, a couple uh, clips right here for you, and a couple fittings for the membrane housing itself. Uh, two of them are going to be just regular clear, you know, two-way pass connections. This one is a one-way check valve. We also have a T, okay, and this is used to connect the tank to the unit, and just some tubing. You're probably going to need a lot more than that in the end, but this for this particular video, this is more than enough to do all the connections. Um, so I just wanted to show you real quick. So here's an overview of everything. And we will go ahead and put this together. And, uh, and uh, in the next video, we'll show you how to connect it to the actual um, feed valves and stuff. Okay? Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to plumbers tape all of our fittings. Now in this video we're only using three fittings. Uh, one is a check valve, two are just standard regular elbow fix, uh, fixed elbow fittings. So uh, just get your plumbers tape and you can get this at like Home Depot, Lowe's, pretty much almost anywhere. Um, you're, you're just going to wrap them up really good, nice and tight. Okay, because anytime you buy these fittings they almost never come taped for you. So tape them up and keep it real nice and tight when you pull, make it nice and taut and just give it a nice wrap. I usually just count them out maybe like 10 times or something. And that really helps me just kind of keep a conscious mind that they're well taped. Okay. And So these are all taped up. Now the one that I have in my hands right now is the check valve. What you want to do with this check valve here is take the membrane housing and flip it in an angle so that you can see it. And you have these two fittings here. Now as you can see, if you're looking from a top down view, okay, uh, you want to pick the one that's very, very high. All right, almost like down the center if you drew a line. Okay, so go ahead and screw it in there. And this is the one that's the most important one. And when you have it in there, just have it off to the side just a little bit like that. It should be nice and snug when you put, plug them in, uh, screw them in. Um, you don't want them loose. They should have some nice tension when you, when you screw it in. That, gives, that tells you that you're taping job was pretty good. And the reason why you have it angled off right now is because if they were straight, this wouldn't turn into it. So I just like to have it off just a little bit just to screw the second fitting in first. And then I'll straighten out the other one. So now check valve and then you have your, uh, this is technically the drain connection. Now you're going to screw in the inlet for the membrane.
Okay, very simple. You're going to take your membrane housing, excuse me, your, mem your membrane, open it up. And they recommend not to touch it as much as you can. So I like to try to use the bag as much as I can to do it. And if I do touch it, it's usually just the tip. You, you have two types of membrane housings. Some have two O-rings, one on the actual rim, one in the actual cap, which is fine. Some just come with just one. Uh, now, when you pull this out, if you want the uh, two O-rings to go in straight in first, okay? So it's just gonna go in just like that. And the gasket's gonna reach at the top, pop it in, and go ahead and reconnect your membrane. Okay, nice and snug. You don't have to over tighten it. Just make sure it's secured. So now you've assembled your membrane and your membrane housing. The hardest part is done, believe it or not. Everything else is pretty simple. Uh, so these inline uh, carbon filters, they'll typically have a flow, okay? And it'll say embossed on it. I'm not too sure if you could read it from this particular lighting, but it'll have a flow arrow, okay? So we're gonna connect the inlet from the wall uh, to this line here and then the output that's going to go to our auto shutoff valve okay this is the asv 4000 and on here it's going to be a little hard to see but you can see in and out and then on, on the opposite side it's blank so very this is very important when you connect this you're going to connect the output of the carbon filter Okay, this is, this is going to be the first step, the output of the carbon filter to go to the in of the ASV. Okay, so these are all quick connects. So all you do is just push it in. It'll snap. You'll feel it snap, actually. And you can't pull it out. Now, just to let you know, if you want to take it out and you made a mistake for whatever reason, what you do is you see this little collar that pops up every time you move that tubing okay you're going to hold it down with your your finger finger or fingers doesn't matter <laughs> and uh, just pull up on the tube and it'll pop right out okay so push it in and it's locked nice and tight all right so once you have that connected you're going to connect again the output of the carbon filter okay going to the inlet of this ASV right there. All right, that's how it's gonna look. So I'm gonna cut my tube. I'm gonna give it some slack. I'll make it look pretty later. Uh, right now I'm just worried about the actual connections. Now I'm using a, a tube cutter. Uh, you can use a nice utility knife and that'll do the job too. All right, but in, in the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna use my own tube cutter. So once I have that cut and I have the in connected, I'm going to take the out, okay, and connect that to the cap of the membrane, all right? Okay, so I'm going to take more tubing, just connect it here. Again, just push it in, snap, cut my tubing to a desired length. And right now, I don't care if it looks pretty. I just want to get my connections first for you guys. And I'm going to connect that to the cap of the housing. Okay, from there, you're going to take the end of the housing, okay? This is the check valve one, okay? Check valve, drain line. Check valve, drain line. Okay, just remember, when you're looking at this membrane housing, it's always the one at the very, very top. And it's almost dead center to the other uh, inlet line. So if you drew a line, it'd be like that. Okay, so now you're going to take this output and you're going to plug it in to the asv on either side it doesn't matter at this point okay so you're going to connect it all right and i'm going to connect it so it's going to look like this 
let's move these lines here. But I'm going to connect it so it looks like that, nice and pretty. So we'll just connect this line here. And then we're going to connect that line there. And again, I don't care about length right now. I just, uh, you know, I don't need it to look pretty. I just need to make the connections first. And then from here, this output, it's going to go to the tank and to the post filter. So in this case, I have a union T. These are all quarter inch. And I'm going to connect like that. And this line, I'm going to connect to the post filter. And again, I don't care about how pretty it is. I just want to connect it. Okay. Right. And you're done. So that's pretty much it. This line is going to go to your tank and let's just uh, this line is going to go to your faucet and let's just get this all connected together so you can see what it looks like these clips just make it nice and pretty puts it all together for you okay. Voila, you have your own homemade reverse osmosis system. And it's done and literally that quick. Uh, so the only other connections that you have to make, again, is gonna be connecting this to your feed line. All right, now this is just an under sink feed line. You can use a countertop feed line as well. But I just wanted to show you that that's the only real other connection that you have to make. Aside from that, this line here that open line is going to go to your tank. So the tank ball valves here, right? And you can connect your tank to whatever size you want. The uh, last line here is going to be going to your faucet. Okay. So you have your three lines. It's all taken care of there. And then now you do have this line here. That's your drain. So to do this one, this is the only one that you need to use a capillary. Okay. Now they'll be in different colors. They may not look exactly like this, but this is what we call a tube capillary. And the tube capillary has usually a tail and it goes into the actual tubing itself, okay? So it'll actually look like it's going in just like that, straight in, okay? And usually have, it'll have a little head popping out, okay? And you're gonna connect that to the drain line like that. And voila, so this will go to a drain adapter. And this drain adapter is probably gonna be the hardest part if you're doing an under sink connection because really all you're doing is just uh, drilling a hole in the P-trap. And yeah, um, that, that's probably gonna be the second scariest part. The first scary, scariest part is gonna be connecting a faucet if you're gonna be drilling a hole through your countertop, which we can talk about in our next video as well. Um, but for the purposes of this, uh, you're pretty much done. This is all really takes to make a reverse osmosis unit. And as you can t see, it took less than like 15 minutes to do it. Um, I really hope that this helps if you wanna make your own reverse osmosis systems. You now know how, it's not that difficult. Um, and again, you know, if you don't like the way these lines look, you can trim them down. You can use extra fittings just to, just to make these lines look nice and, and clean. But for the purpose of this video, I just wanted to make the connections just to show you how quick it was. Um, a lot of these units, again, online, you can see them all over the place for like hundreds of dollars. So I wanted to make sure that everyone can make their own unit, especially during these times, to, to do it less than 15 minutes and to be able to uh, have great tasting drinking water for probably like 100 bucks or less. All right, so I'm going to post everything that I used here. Um, in the links below 
And if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. I really hope this video helps. Um, leave a comment, uh, post a like, share it, do what you got to do. I uh, really hope this helps. Thank you.